Now we're going to talk about the analysis of random mappings. Uh, this is something uh, we've been promising for a while, and actually it uses uh, uh, a lot of the things, pretty much everything we've talked about uh, so far uh, for the analysis. Uh, and it's a very elegant and compelling uh, application of analytic combinatorics. So a mapping is a function from the set of integers from 1 to n onto itself. Uh, this is from uh, lecture 2. Uh, and we can represent every mapping with the digraph uh, where every node has out degree 1. Uh, it goes, there's an arrow from every node to some other node. Uh, and the n degree could be anything from uh, 0 to n. And uh, some mapping, some, the mapping divides up into components. Uh, and the components are cycles or they're uh, cycles of uh, labeled trees. And there's lots of applications where uh, we're interested in studying properties of mappings. Uh, and natural questions that come up are how many different components are there on average in a random mapping? Uh, how many of the nodes are on cycles and how many are on trees? Uh, and so forth. And there's several other parameters that come up. And these are all uh, handled in a fairly straightforward uh, manner with uh, the schemas that we've been considering. Uh, so first question is enumeration. How many mappings are there uh, of length n? Uh, and uh, we talked about this uh, in lecture two. Uh, in one sense, uh, it's easy. You're mapping n integers onto themselves for each of the n uh, position each of the n nodes, there's n possibilities of where it could point, so it's n to the n. Uh, but the internal structure uh, is of interest in plenty of applications, so this is another way uh, to uh, break out the uh, number of mappings. And with analytic combinatorics, we're going to take a look at the structure, and that also allows us to analyze average values of parameters. Uh, and so uh, we looked at this basic setup uh, in lecture two. Uh, it starts with trees, Cayley trees, labeled rooted unordered trees. A Cayley tree is uh, a node and a set of trees, a root and a set of trees. Uh, and that translates by the symbolic method immediately to C of Z equals E C of Z. Uh, a component in a mapping is a cycle of trees. So Y equals a cycle of trees where C is the class of trees. So y is log of 1 over 1 minus c of z, where c of z is defined that way. And then a mapping is a set of cycles of trees. It's a, a set of mapping components. Uh, and that translates to the uh, EGF equation e to the log of 1 over 1 minus c of z, or 1 over 1 minus c of z. Uh, so that's the basic structure of the uh, uh, symbolic method uh, for mappings. And now we're going to see how that has implications for the uh, analysis of the enumeration of each one of these items uh, and, and for enumeration of parameters and mappings. Uh, so uh, this is from earlier in this lecture. We just did this one. Uh, that's uh, Cayley trees, labeled ordered trees. We went from the construction to the generating function. And then when it's a simple variety of trees, so we went to immediately to the coefficient asymptotics. Uh, that was our last example of a simple variety of trees. It's exactly this class C. Uh, but I remember at the beginning of the lecture, I pointed out that we not only can get coefficient asymptotics from singularity analysis, we can also get approximation to the function. Uh, so I've been leaving this off, but uh, that's uh, in the theorem. We get approximation to the function. Uh, it's lambda minus uh, uh, this same constant uh, times square root of 1 minus z phi prime of z. Uh, so in this case, uh, where lambda is 1 uh, and they're all e, uh, it says that the generating function for Cayley trees uh, is asymptotic to uh, at 1 over e, which is where the uh, near singularity of the origin is. It's asymptotic to 1 minus square root of 2 square root of 1 minus ez. And so we can make use of that approximation uh, uh, later on in the analysis. So for example, we want to know the number of cycles of trees. Uh, that's the components in a mapping. Uh, the generating function equation we get is immediately log of 1 over 1 minus c of z. But the last slide, c of z, is asymptotic to 1 minus root 2 square root of 1 minus c of z. 
1 minus that is root 2 square root of 1 minus ez. Uh, so that comes out to half log of 1 minus ez minus log root 2. Uh, just plugging that in. Uh, so that's uh, approximation for the generating function for the number of mapping components. Uh, but this one is uh, just a standard scale. Just says log of 1 over 1 minus ez is e the n over n. So that immediately gives the uh, asymptotics of the coefficients or number of cycles in trees is uh, e to the n over 2n. Uh, or an another way to uh, look at that is to apply uh, Stirling's uh, uh, formula and get square root of pi over 2n n to the n. Uh, so and that's two different uh, expressions uh, uh, for that, or, or that's factoring in the uh, n factorial to get the number of uh, different mapping components of size n. So that's cycles of trees, uh, and now we want the class of all mappings. So mapping is a set of cycles of trees, so that's e to the y of z. Uh, y of z, uh, on the previous slide, we showed that y of z is asymptotic to half log 1 over 1 minus z, ez minus log of square root of 2. Uh, so now we have e to the log, that's x log. Uh, so uh, our theorem for x log label sets uh, says uh, if we're taking e to something that can be approximated to a log, we just have to know the constants. Coefficient of the log is 1 half. Uh, z over rho, that's 1 over e, and beta is minus log 2. So uh, those three values, uh, plug those in, and we immediately get the asymptotics of the class of uh, all mappings. Alpha equals 1 half, beta equals log square root of 2, rho equals 1 over e, uh, and we get the uh, number of mappings is asymptotic to n factorial e to the n over square root of 2 pi n which is Sterling's equation in another form. It gives, uh, it, applying Sterling just uh, leaves the n to the n, uh, and that's what we're looking for in the first place. Uh, even the three simple transfers from analytic combinatorics, uh, that seems like a lot of work to get down to n to the n, uh, but it tells us uh, the entire structure, and we can uh, extend this to uh, similar problems as well. Uh, I just want to give an overview of uh, what that structure looks like. Uh, just a reminder again, we started with Cayley trees and we applied our simple variety of trees uh, schema uh, to get that, get that one. Uh, and then for uh, components and mappings, uh, we plugged in that approximation and used the standard scale. Uh, and then to do mappings themselves, we use x blog. So uh, uh, three different transfer schemas uh, to get down uh, to the uh, answer for mappings. Uh, and so uh, they all have, have their uses uh, in, in this problem. Uh, but more generally, if we want to look at problems like what's the average number of components uh, in a random mapping, or how many of the nodes are on, on cycles uh, in average, uh, and these are the calculations for the small examples, uh, then uh, we can get those uh, just by uh, the same process, just uh, extending the transfer theorem slightly. Well, components come for free because we have the uh, corollary to x blog saying that if you have an x blog setup, the number of components is alpha log n, uh, and we had alpha equals a half, so average number of components in a random mapping is one half log n. Uh, again, it comes immediately through by the same process that we use for a simple problem like uh, permutations. Uh, or nodes on cycles, well, we can use bivariate generating functions, uh, mark the nodes on cycles with u. Uh, so then we get a bivariate generating function, uh, x blog 1 over 1 minus u. Uh, and now we can put in, uh, uh, to get the expected number of nodes on cycles, uh, we have to uh, differentiate with respect to u and evaluate at 1. So uh, that gives us an expression in terms of the generating function for Cayley trees. But now at this point, with singularity analysis, we have an approximation for that generating function, so we can plug in that approximation. So c of z equals 1 minus square root of 2 square root of 1 minus ez. 1 minus c of z equals just that, and then if you square it, you get 2 times 1 minus ez. 
uh, in C of z over uh, 1 minus C of z squared is asymptotic to 1 half 1 over 1 minus e z. So uh, you, can, uh, you can check that, but that's not too uh, difficult. So that gives us uh, an approximation for uh, the uh, generating function uh, for uh, uh, the expected number of nodes on cycles, and we want to get the coefficient of z to the n in that, uh, but that's just an expansion. It's just e to the n over n to the n. And uh, then uh, applying Stirling formulas, uh, the uh, pi comes back, pi, uh, pi over square root of 2 uh, pi comes back. And so the average number of nodes on cycles is square root of pi over n over 2. Uh, very straightforward calculations based on singularity analysis. Uh, and this, this graph, uh, <coughs> for example, uh, the, it, it predicts that uh, there'd be 12.5 uh, nodes on cycles, and actually there's nine, uh, and that's uh, for bigger graphs, it'll be more accurate. Uh, these uh, estimates are accurate to 1 over n, uh, so, but, and we could get more terms uh, if we wanted. Uh, uh, because uh, everything that we do is extended, extendable to uh, any asymptotic uh, accuracy. So that's the use of singularity analysis to study uh, mappings uh, and their characteristics.